Do you suffer from the debilitating symptoms of chronic pain, swelling, and loss of joint motion due to arthritis? Are you taking drugs like Celebrex and Vioxx or other super aspirin prescriptions? If you are, you're increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke by up to 50%. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, host of Dr. Tom Rosell Live Sundays at 12 noon. Why live with pain or the dangerous side effects of drugs when the doctors at the Rosell Center for Healing practicing 21st century integrative medicine can help you experience relief like never before? Simple, safe, chiropractic, acupuncture, and nutritional care can provide significant relief from arthritic pain in less than six weeks. More than 70% of our patients experience a return to life far beyond their expectations. Give yourself the best gift possible, freedom from arthritic pain, naturally. Call today to schedule an appointment. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Dr. Tom Roselle live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Roselle live. This is Dr. Tom Roselle live in studio. Triple eight, excuse me, triple eight six three zero nine six two five, triple eight six three zero WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject you have in mind. It's cold outside, my friends. Button button up, but it's pretty. It's nice. Sun shining, and we're gonna turn the lights off for you today. What does that mean? Well, many of you have the lights on, and you stay awake all night long. You can't get the rest that you need. You can't allow things to kind of, you know, simmer out for the day, and your brain's working all uh, all night long. Nothing you do. You do all kinds of things. You drink hot milk. You drink a glass of wine. You go out and, you know, try to be totally fatigued doing all kinds of things, but you still can't sleep. Well, this is the day we're going to talk about insomnia. And in studio, we have a brilliant young doctor who is going to help you understand the intricacies of staying asleep and getting the rest that you need and turning your brain off and making sure everything works the way it's supposed to work at nighttime when you're supposed to be otherwise rebuilding and repairing instead of destroying and breaking down. Welcome to the show, Dr. Adams. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, you're more than welcome to be here. Dr. Matthew Adams is a associate uh, in our practice at the Roselle Center for Healing, and this is his first presentation. So we want to welcome you to the program, and I promise you that I don't bite, I won't eat you, you know, and uh, we'll make it very nice. And you're doing the in-house uh, continuing education program this Wednesday evening at the Roselle Center for Healing, and guess what his topic is? It's called insomnia. So let's get into that a little bit, and we already have uh, people calling. We're going to get to our calls today as well. But Dr. Matt, seriously, all kidding aside, this is a problem that plagues many people, actually millions of people. Well, yeah, it's a huge problem, and, and you know, coming up here to D.C., I, I think I see so much more of this than other parts of the country, uh, the amount of stress and anxiety and traffic and who knows what. Uh, well, you're, you're, a, you're a ridge runner. I mean, you, you don't have any stress at all. You're in the hills of Tennessee. That's beautiful country. <laughs> I mean, fresh air, high ionization, and so forth, so you can sleep all the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly, all the time. But you also have a, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. That uh, that means can't. you don't sleep all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, statistically, more than half Americans, you know, lose sleep from stress anxiety. That's a lot, a lot of people. And I've been looking at statistics. The the sleep deprivation causes all kinds of problems, traffic problems, money problems. We have hundreds of thousands of vehicle accidents from drowsy driving. I mean, people spend millions and billions, the government does, on um, sleep aids and workers and all kinds of stuff. So this is a major problem. Dr. Matt, seriously, how many people uh, generally have this type of problem, either as a chronic condition, it just you know it's always there, they don't sleep, and it's been like that for many years, or it's something that is transient. You know, it happens, it goes away, it happens, it goes away. Uh, but in total, how would you you know you characterize it? Is it you know one out of ten people, one out of every four, one out of every hundred? Uh, what are we looking at? Well, I mean, statistically, you know, it says more than thirty percent of the population suffers from some form of insomnia. But I'd say it was higher. I don't think people really understand uh, when it comes to insomnia. I think p- most people think that they're supposed to be tired. It's normal to be tired when you wake up. Insomnia, the definition, really covers it can't fall asleep, you wake up in the middle of the night at different times, you don't feel awake when you sleep. So it's a huge range of problems with sleep. And uh, so I would say, you know, you're looking at more 40, 50% of the so, population. So you, mean, so you mean you're supposed to get up in the morning and feel good? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. I mean, you know, most people don't think that's accurate. Well, you look at look at your kids when they, they wake coffee. up. They my, need the Joe. <laughs> my, you know, this morning, I, my my daughters wake up and they're all laughing and giggling and jumping around, and uh, that's what we're supposed to be like. That's what we were like before. Why can't we be like that now? Well, because we went to school and we got married and we have debts <laughs> and you know we, we're out and we eat the wrong stuff all the time and we're pushing and God forbid we turn the television off at nighttime and the lights are on when we fall asleep and it goes on. Yeah, it's and, a, th- and that's just scratching the surface. Yeah, there's just there's a whole pattern that we we start to pull in and then we, you know, do things that we think we're supposed to that, to help it and a lot of times that can cause problems in itself. Seriously, let's talk about, I mean, Samia, obviously, and we've kind of set the stage that it's uh, a very, very critical situation, and it lends itself to a lot of very devastating side effects of not sleeping. And I want to ask you that question. 888 wmal My guest, Dr. Matt Adams, your host this Wednesday evening at the Results Center for Healing for our in-house continuing education program. Dr. Matt will be presenting insomnia, how to fix it better than anything else. So if you're suffering from sleep deprivation, if you're not getting up in the morning feeling, okay, let's go, it's a new day, let's get started, this is a opportunity, this is a night that you should make yourself available for show up call us 703-698-7117 that's 703-698-7117 let's talk about you know what happens with uh, not getting enough sleep how does it affect the body how does it affect us as uh, how does it affect our health man well one of the biggest things it affects our immune system during our sleep that's the time where our body recharges and rebuilds um affects our memory Uh, the things that we pick up during the day and we learn during the day during the nighttime, during our sleep, that's where our body kind of takes those memories and puts it into our deep memory centers, if you will, and so that we can remember those long term. Um, it affects our mood. It affects our uh, adrenal system. It affects so many things. That's that's our time for our body to recharge for the next day. And if we, you know, you think about your your cell phone. If you're not recharging on a regular basis, I mean, it starts to get lower and lower and have problems. I think our body's the same way. Let me ask you a question. With, uh, you know, with people that can't sleep, and you know, I was on purpose one of those people for many, many years when I was building my practice. I'm lecturing. I'm on the road all the time and so forth. Years ago, I'm bad now. I'm in the practice. I start seeing patients at 6 o'clock in the morning, so I'm in the office by quarter of it, the latest. But years ago, I used to see patients at 5 o'clock, 5.15. So a good night's sleep for me was five hours, and I could function you know, pretty well, I thought, for a period of time. And I'd get a cat nap uh, kind of at my lunchtime. I'd close my eyes for about 10, 15 minutes. But there's consequences to those types of activities. Let's talk about the, you know, the impact health-wise, you know, uh, the repair process, the psychological aspects, and when people don't sleep. Well, if, if you're you're not sleeping, then you know you're obviously waking up tired, and then you're looking for some kind of stimulant to pick you up. Um, your blood sugar's down, all these different things. And so, whenever we look at stimulants, we look at blood sugar to to get us going. Then we start affecting all other parts of our body. Um, you know, we talk a lot on here about stress and your adrenal stress responses and how that can affect your health. Um, and so you get into this pattern also. And, and another thing is is if you're continually regulating yourself and only getting that amount of sleep, you get into this pattern where your body thinks that that's what it's supposed to do. So now when you decide, I'm going to make a change and I'm going to fall asleep earlier, you can't do it. Uh, I know that there's an increase in risk of many different types of things with sleep deprivation. Uh, everything from uh, psychotic disorders and uh, all kinds of, of uh, well, even suicide. Suicide dramatically increases with the amount of sleep you don't get. Uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating subject. And then people get put on psych- uh, psychotropic drugs. Uh, we can even put into that combination the, the, the number one drug that uh, most physicians write is Ambien. And that works to modulate certain neurological chemistries to allow the people to go into a sleep pattern. But the problem is it's not a normal sleep pattern. And then we go to the natural source and we th- take things like Ambien and We think that, well, as long as I'm taking Ambien, that'll work. The problem with Ambien is that it causes problems with other hormones, particularly the stress hormone that uh, that we need to see rise at nighttime called cortisol. Are you talking about melatonin? Melatonin. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. 
and so but anyway those are the things that that we have to be aware of and most people uh, don't let me ask you this question is it worse to go to sleep and wake up and break the sleep cycle or is it worse to sleep short periods of time where you know you can get to sleep but you sleep solid for five hours and then you get up and get going or you go to bed you're in bed for eight hours but you only sleep through a normal rhythm of 90 minutes and then you wake up and then you might go back for an hour and you wake up and which is uh, more deleterious to the body I mean that's a tough one because they're both kind of deleterious but I'd, I'd say having to wake up multiple times during the night because that I mean at least you can go through some of your sleep cycles and do some recharging versus waking up multiple times um, having to start over again you know and a lot of times people are doing that you know people wonder why they're waking up multiple times a lot of times it's lifestyle things. It's dietary things. It's our our blood sugar. Um, you know, if we're if we're not eating the way we should, and our blood sugar is going up, and then at night we go to sleep. You know, during, during the day we sleep. We go about you know, three hours without eating. Four hours. Then you try to sleep four or five hours. Your blood sugar's tanking. Your body's got to say, Hey, wake up! I got to get some more blood sugar going. So your stress system, your cortisol, like you just talked about, comes up, and now we get in this bad pattern of waking up two, three times at night, and uh, you just can't recharge that way. Now, when cortisol is at its peak, which it should be at the first thing in the morning, that's why we're ready to go. When we see patients, when we do an adrenal stress index, which is a measure of several different hormones, but one is cortisol, what we're looking at is how high that cortisol level gets, and it should be high in the morning. That's when you feel good. That's when you're bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and ready to get up in the morning and start the world. But if it's not at the high level that it needs to be, then you feel like junk. You don't want to get up. Yeah, well, you, we talked about the other one, melatonin. That has the it has to be opposite of the cortisol. So, you know, normally that should be real high at night. Um, cortisol should be real low. Yeah, we run those adrenal stress indexes, and, and we talk to people. They're like, yeah, I'm so tired in the morning, but then I wake up. Or I don't wake up, but I'm going to go to bed, and I get this, like, second wind at 10 o'clock. And so we check their index and their cortisol is way up at 10 o'clock when it should be way down so that they can sleep. And it, then it's way down in the morning when they should be up. So it, their circadian rhythm, which is what's going on, that is all thrown off. And that's why they're having so many problems. Yeah, we were talking on the way up, and I, and I said to you, if somebody's going to be put on melatonin to help begin to regulate the cycle, the reason that you would give melatonin is to down-regulate cortisol and allow you to go to sleep. Because if cortisol drops, you can get sleepier. And at the end of the day, your cortisol should be the minimum of the day, so you want to fall asleep naturally. But if it doesn't do that, then you're going to have a very difficult time going to sleep. You're going to sit there with both of your eyes wide open, looking at the, the ceiling, and regardless of the room is black or otherwise, but we've got to calm that down. But if you take cortisol, or excuse me, melatonin, be just at the time of bedtime, not going to work so good for a repair cycle because your cortisol has to rise during the night, getting at the highest level in the morning when you're awake. Yeah. So you want to take that, you know, two, three hours before, so let your let it go through your system, bring your melatonin up. So then your cortisol, when it does rise, is rising at the right time for you to wake up in the morning. It's not rising later at you know lunch or dinner time whenever you're wanting to start calm down again. I want to get into several of the reasons why this happens, and because we're, we're I can promise you, there's a lot of people sitting out there right now and saying, yeah, I know, I've got to take a, a sleep aid every night just to get me to sleep, or I got to have a glass of something, you know, alcoholic to get me to calm down to to relax. And the truth of it is, when we were talking about Michael Jordan, that was he was told that he had to have a couple beers before he went to sleep at night time. And the problem is that it'll put you to sleep, but also wakes you up in the middle of the night. And we're going to explore that a little further as as the program goes on. We're here at triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's triple eight six three zero WMAL. My guest in studio, Dr. Matt Adams. He will be your host, your presenter this Wednesday evening at the Rizal Center for Healing. He's going to be talking about insomnia and it, both kinds. You know, the kind that you go to sleep and you wake up all night long or the, the kind that you just can't get to sleep or guess what? The kind that you only sleep for maybe three to five hours and that's it. You're done no matter what. There's reasons for that and we're going to explore those. We have to take a break. We're coming up for some very important messages. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. 
For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Educate. Engage. Empower. Take control of your health with Dr. Tom Roselle and the Roselle Center for Healing. Information is power. Achieve an ultimate state of wellness with Dr. Tom Roselle's Education Lecture Series Video On Demand. Discover how to create an extraordinary life of optimal health and wellness. Visit drtomrosell.com slash education. That's drtomrosell.com slash education. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live in studio, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you. We have a whole panel of you that want answers to all kinds of things, and we're going to try to take that. My guest in studio, Dr. Matt Adams, will be your presenter at the Rosell Center for Healing this Wednesday evening, the 20th of February. If you'd like to attend, give our office a call at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. The topic, insomnia. Whether you can't get to sleep, whether you wake up, or you're only sh- uh, sleeping for short periods of time, this is an opportunity for you to figure out how to fix that. Let's go to the phones. Jack, how can I help you, sir? Thank you for calling. Jack, are you there? Hello, Jack. Maybe we lost Jack, so Jack will have to call us back. Gene, how can I help you? Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks for calling. What can we do for you? Almost every time you hear a mattress company advertisement on the radio or TV, it gives you the impression that if you're having trouble sleeping, get a new mattress. The problem is your mattress. It's great marketing, man. Um, how much of that is bunk and placebo, and how much of that is uh, contributing to the fact that you can't stay asleep or get to sleep? It depends on your structural system. If you have problems with your spine, if you have problems with the uh, neuromuscular system of your body, a good mattress will... It will help relax the body so you're not in the pain pattern because a lot of us suffer from underlying pain, uh, and that wakes us up. It kind of uh, never lets us go into a deep, deep sleep. So if you get a good mattress, uh, it can make a difference. But good mattresses is, is, you know, based on individual comfort. Uh, for example, if you ask me, what do I like? I like a nice, hard mattress with a little bit of uh, memory foam on it and one that supports the curvatures in my spine. Uh, that will allow me to sleep better. Some of them, uh, if they're not very, very soft, aren't going to make you feel good because people have too many postural uh, distortions. They they have increased curvatures in their upper back or they have a flat neck. So there's no one size fit all. So is it across the board? No. Uh, do some of the mattresses give you some decent support? Yes. I have some favorites. I have some that I'll tell you not to uh, even go anywhere near. Those I won't tell you on uh, on the air. But uh, the Beautyrest mattress, uh, Simmons, uh, puts out a great one. They're the individual pocketed coils. And you should even special order it so you can get the most, uh, the greatest number of uh, pocketed coils you know, per square foot. And uh, the memory phone basically is based on your comfort level. Uh, the Tempur-Pedic mattress is a great one. The problem is it holds heat. And, you know, if you run hot-blooded to begin with, like I do half the time, I'm up and I'm trying to find another uh, bed at nighttime. We've got one, and we have a beauty rest at the house. Uh, there's some other mattresses that are really top shelf as well. So the bottom line, the answer to your question is Fifth Avenue Marketing is a beautiful thing. And they all want you to believe that their mattress is the best of the best. However, there are some mattresses that are better than others. You will get a better night's sleep if you have a good mattress. You should never keep a mattress for my book, My Rule of Thumb is Our House. Ten to 12 years, it's gone. I get another one or I put it on uh, in the guest room. Uh, if you want me to get real specific relative to uh, topics, which we don't have the time on the program, uh, write me at uh, drtomrosell.com or rosellcare.com, and I'll get back to you, and I'll give you what I think is a good one for you. Thank you. You're welcome, Gene. Thank you for your call. I appreciate it. Marianne, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Hi. Um, <clears throat> I was diagnosed um, with Bartonella, and um, my doctor did cortisol levels on me. Yes. And mine starts out at, like, zero in the morning and peaks at noon and then starts um, going right back down to zero. Yeah, your cortisol levels all messed up, kiddo. It's, well, I wondered. I've always been a night person. Could it be that they've been that way all along, or? Well, there are there are very few people who have they'll have a flipped cortisol, but you have to make sure that the entire rhythm 
is exactly the same. Normal cortisol rhythm, at midnight, your cortisol should be the lowest of the day. And then it starts gradually increasing till about 7 o'clock in the morning, between 6 and 8, because nothing's absolute. It should be the highest of the day. And then it gently begins to drop until late in the day again. It starts going down, 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 down until you're ready to go to sleep at night. And But the, the reason that it increases starting at midnight is when you're supposed to be asleep and your body starts repairing. Your body needs cortisol while it's asleep, while it's going through a REM pattern so you can heal. If it's okay. not doing that, your body can't heal. It actually, and here's the deal with cortisol. Cortisol, if it's way too high, will eat you, destroy tissue. And if it's way too low, you can't fix anything. So that normal rhythm is critical. You have to make sure that you have that. And if you don't sleep at uh, and in any other time, you need to sleep from just before midnight till about 7 o'clock in the morning where you're getting your best sleep based on that cortisol spiking and also when you're going into REM pattern because we need lights out. We need to have a perfectly black room when we're sleeping. Now, you can change that artificially by making your room black and so forth. Marianne, I hope that's somewhat helpful to you. You can get a hold of me at drtomrozell.com. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. We have to take a break. We're coming up to the news and some very important information. Stay tuned. Don't go away. My guest in studio, Dr. Matt Adams, and he'll be your presenter this Wednesday evening, the 20th of the month. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you. My guest in studio, Dr. Matt Adams, one of the brightest and the best in my practice, and he's going to be talking to you about sleep deprivation, insomnia, this Wednesday evening, February the 20th. You're welcome. Give us a call at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff you'd like to attend. Our in-house programs are a gift that's how we serve our community, and we'd love to have you there. All we request from you, there's no charge, by the way, all we request from you is a reservation because we have limited spacing, and once we max that out, it's done. We can't take any more, and you're going to have to sit in the hallway and listen through the door. So give us a call, 703-698-7117. You're laughing, Dr. Matt. You know how packed that room gets yeah, sometimes. Gets, I've, many times where I've been grabbing chairs for people, so you you got to get in. Oh, you're, yeah, it's, it's tough to hear back there sometimes. It is. It's very difficult. However, in our next office, we will have an auditorium, and we will invite people as our guests in our office. That way that we have plenty of room. But we'll fit everybody in who wants to come. That's right. Thank Somehow, you. even if you have to sit behind the counter with the girls. I mean, we'll get you in there. But seriously, call us, 703-698-7117. If you're having any problems sleeping, if you can't stay asleep, if you can't get to sleep, if you're only sleeping a short period of time, it's an opportunity really to find out how to fix this because truth of it is, it's fixable if you're willing to make some changes. And by the way, my book, Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program, talks about sleep patterns and why they're important and some of the things that you can do to help yourself. But we've talked today about uh, blood sugar regulation and we talked about a little bit about getting to sleep at certain times. Cortisol is critical to healing. It's a stress hormone, but you've got to have a little bit of it because otherwise you're kind of dead anyway. So, But most people flatline with cortisol and it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Got to f- have a few more phone calls. We're going to take those as well. But, Dr. Matt, I want to ask you a question. When there's trauma, injury, blows to the body, particularly the head and neck, what does that got to do with sleep? Well, all the sleep is regulated by a bunch of neurotransmitters, and neurotransmitters are in the head. Uh, serotonin receptors specifically are, are all around your, your brain stem. So, um, it doesn't even take a, a real hard. Most people, when I ask them if they had any injuries or traumas, they're thinking, you know, did I wake up in the hospital? But it don't have to be that. It can be um, when you're a kid, you fall, you hit your head. Uh, when, if you can be in like a small fender bender, the amount of force that still goes through, it affects the spine. It affects the nervous system through the spine. We forget the brain communicates to everything through the spine. So there's global effects plus the central effects of all your neurotransmitters and your receptors and all those things going on inside your head. You know, we were we were talking about trauma and rear end collisions and so forth. One of the most devastating injuries to the body is an injury that is low speed, is about 15 miles an hour. There's something called linear linear acceleration of trauma of injury, and when you get a, a blow at 15 miles an hour, there's usually no damage to the car. And so where where that force goes is to the occupants of the car. It goes directly into the spine. If you get a direct uh, blow from the back, 
By the time it reaches your neck, it's at five gravitational units of force. A jet pilot can uh, black out at six. So it's significant. So there's going to be injury to the neck. There's going to be injury to the head. And many people, if you trace it back long enough and you ask them the right questions, they say, yeah, I had an injury long ago, but there was no big deal. I had a stiff neck for a while, but I was okay. Well, that can be a predisposition to these types of things. Yeah, and you look at, um, I played soccer for years. I don't know how many times I, you know, hit the ball with my head or knock me one way or the other. People play That's football. That's what's wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I knew there was a reason. Go ahead. So, I mean, all those all those things that, that take place over time cause so much trauma. And then you look at what we call micro traumas. So, you know, look at nowadays, we all sit at computers, we text message, we, we read our iPad, our head's always down. So now we've got all kinds of compression on the spine, uh, which compresses and puts pressure on the nerves, and it had another mirage of problems just right there. Let's talk a little bit about the medications that people are taking. They go to their docs. They're suffering from all kinds of things, from chronic fatigue. Uh, doc figures that they can't sleep except they're half comatose all the time, and they're going to put them on Ambien and other types of drugs. Let's talk about the effect and why people shouldn't be, besides being hooked and addicted to it, why they shouldn't be taking that and they should be looking for other reasons. Well, the problem is, is we're we're looking at the symptoms. We're like, okay, well, I can't fall asleep. So what's going to help me fall asleep? Well, we don't look at the effects of that. Of, yeah, it'll help me relax and fall asleep. But now I'm, you know, waking up right after, or now I wake up and I feel totally groggy because it's not working correctly with your hormones and your circadian rhythm, and it's throwing it off. And so later down the line, you're becoming more and more dependent. Um, goes the other way. I'm I'm sleepy all the time. I'm tired. So I give something to to wake me up, a stimulant, a drug, whatever. And so now we come dependent on that, and our body can't regulate itself and f- and function. And so once again, we're becoming dependent on these things. And these, if you look at them, if you research them, they're all. Short-term use. It says short-term use, not long-term. Well, the interesting thing is that uh, the number one side effect of all these drugs, whether it's something like uh, Rosarum or Imoven or Ambien or any of those other drugs, the, the number one side effects is fatigue. So if you're taking this to put you to sleep and you end up fatigued anyway, and, and it goes on, by the way, it's drowsiness and, you know, go figure and dizziness and headache. And uh, there's some very, very serious side effects of swelling that uh, is also consistent with many of these medications. So we have to find another way. And there are many ways of getting this done. I want to talk to you a little bit about how we evaluate a patient that has a sleep problem, whether it's traumatic-induced or it's biochemical. And I do want to talk about the biochemical aspects uh, before we're done for today, but I do want to get to the program uh, respectfully for our people who are calling in. Greg, how can I help you, sir? Thank you for calling. Oh, hello, doctors. How are you? We're doing well, my friend. How are you today? Well, we're doing much better. My family, uh, on this subject of uh, lighting glare, suffered from insomnia and increased high blood pressure. We lived across... Uh, street from a major gas station that was installing high glare light that was shining in our house and our uh, lawyer successfully uh, sued them because of health effects and light pollution and glare. Good for you. And uh, they put in recessed lights and uh, solved the problem because our health condition was getting worse and worse. What's the question, Greg? Well, I just want to say uh, hopefully the state of Maryland will pass some glare ordinances that are uh, affecting uh, people who live near high glare uh, institutions. Well, you know, you, know, you know the way, as well as I do, that unless you're willing to take up the banner to go after these things and be proactive uh, on your own, uh, it's very unlikely because, you know, there's behind the scenes who's paying who off and who needs to have, uh, you know, their light showing all the time and making sure that their advertising is going well and so forth. But, you know, it, the truth of it is, is, and the only interim step that anybody can take and something that I've, I've told patients for years is that you have to sleep in a black room. Even yeah. digital printouts, even night lights, even any of those things have to be away from you. Otherwise, you're never going to go into a deep sleep. So until you can effectively change things as you have legally through the system, go get yourself some blackout curtains that don't let anything in and get rid of everything and anything in your light that has a digital or light signal to it so you can sleep, so you can allow the pineal gland to reset itself and allow your cortisol level to upregulate the way it's supposed to in the middle of the night. But anyway, good for you, Greg. I appreciate it. Thanks for your call. That's I have to give him kudos. That's uh, that's a good thing because unfortunately, there's you know we live in a metropolitan area. 
uh, it's not going to be changed across the board. But when there's a blatant situation like that where there's way too much uh, stimulation due to lights and you can't block it out or you haven't taken the, the time to explore some other things. I'm not saying that's the case here with Greg, but um, you know you have to do something about it. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. If you'd like to talk to us off air, it's real simple. Go to drtomrosell.com. It's d r t o m r o s e l l e dot com and send us a note. We will get back to you. It's a promise. If sometimes it takes a few days, but we will get there if you want to talk to us before that. Same number that you're going to use to register for Dr. Matt's class this Wednesday evening, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Also want to remind you, and it's on our websites, that if you would ever like to have one of our doctors come to your church group, to your organization, to your club, to a group of people that would like to hear a very specific topic, we're delighted to do that for you. That's why we're here. We want to give you as much information as we can because... As the title of my book, Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. The more we empower you to do the things that you need to do, the more likely it is that your health index, your wellness index, climbs. Call our office, 703-698-7117. Ask for Dareth, and she will hook you up. She'll make sure that one of us shows up and handles the topic that you'd like to have dealt with. Dr. Matt, let's talk a little bit about what we've been talking about. I want you to get into the whys and the wherefores of some of these things. So a patient comes in to you, and they say, Doc, you know, I just can't stay asleep all night long. I may fall asleep for, you know, an hour, and then I'm awake, and I may stay awake a half hour. Sometimes I don't fall asleep for another two, three hours, then I go back to sleep. I'm exhausted. I'm mentally not functioning the way I'm supposed to. I'm very depressed. How do you handle it? Well, you've you got to ask. I mean, when we're asking all kinds of questions and, and asking questions that people are like, why are you asking me this? Why are you asking me, you know, about a car accident 15 years ago? I'm trying to sleep now. Or why are you asking me, you know, what did I eat for dinner? When did I eat? What does that have to do with me sleeping? Um, why are you asking me what time I wake up? I mean, I don't know. You know, I get that all the time. I don't remember. And then, you know, after they think about it, like, well, you know, I seem to wake up. At the same time, every night, um, uh, three o'clock. You can Google. That's an interesting one. If you Google, uh, you know, somebody wake up at the same time. Three a.m. is a big one. Comes up all the time. Um, we've had uh, Stephanie, our acupuncturist, come in here many times. We talk about acupuncture energy and how it relates with organ systems. Your acupuncture energy raises and goes up. Each uh, meridian system at different points of the day or points in the evening, it circulates through. And there are particular ones in the evening that can, or that go up at those times. And if they're having problems, or we have emotional um, problems that relate to it, can cause us to wake up at those times. Yeah, even the the organ or the emotional component that's associated with that organ system will cause it. And obviously, I, I set you up for this the question, but the truth of it is, is that things like the uh, the lung, the lung meridian is the highest as we get closer to 3 o'clock in the morning. And if we're waking up at the same time all the time, at 3 o'clock or 2.30 or 3.30 into that neighborhood, it usually is a problem with the lung itself. It can be a pathological problem or a condition that's brewing in the lung, but it also can be the emotion that's associated with the lung, which is grief. And if, if there's an unresolved grief pattern, something has happened in your life and we've never really crossed the, the river with it, Guess what happens? You're going to wake up. You're going to deal with. It. You may not even be aware that you're upset about it, but uh, everything that's associated with that lung. If we've had a cold, a lot of people are suffering from pneumonia and colds at this time of the year, and they're noticing that the symptoms get worse at nighttime. Well, the reason they get worse at nighttime is because the organ systems, the energy that's associated with that, the lung, the respiratory system, is going to have more energy, so the symptom is going to be more virulent, if you will, at nighttime. If they wake up. At one o'clock in the morning, it's liver. Yeah, I mean, and livers are major detoxer. And you you think about all the stuff that our liver has to uh, process on an everyday basis, from the foods we eat to the environmental toxins we have. I mean, it's amazing how it can do all that. I don't know how it can it can take all this junk we put through ourselves. Um, but yeah, it, now we're looking at okay, you've got um, liver associated with anger. So if you've got anger, you're having problems. With liver, well, it, it could be uh, chemicals, things we're putting in our body that's having problems with liver. It could be um, maybe you're having some 
issues with your blood or an infection. So there's so many ways and areas of the body you have to look and dig and question to find a problem. It may not even be a hormone or melatonin thing that we're talking about. It could be something with your intestinal tract that's giving you problems, causing problems with the liver or your lungs, and that's why you're having trouble sleeping. 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you. We're here in studio talking to Dr. Matt Adams, associate in our practice. We'll be talking to you this Wednesday evening, February the 20th at 7.30 p.m. at the Rizal Center for Healing. He's going to be talking about, guess what, insomnia and how to fix it, how to make it different, how to change your life if you haven't been sleeping for a while. Give us a call at 703-698-7117. Tell my staff that you'd like to attend. Let's go back to the phones. Laura, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Yes, I had a question regarding people who work night shifts and how that affects your cortisol levels and your ability to sleep during the day versus at night. It depends on how you handle it, Laura. If you maintain the same cycle all the time, your body will struggle to adapt, but it will adapt over a period of time, but you have to maintain the same cycle on an ongoing basis. So, for example, if you're working the night shift and you know you, you go to work at 11 and you're home at 7, you, you need to go to bed, but you need to make sure that room is black, I mean perfectly black, that there is no light, not even a little bit of sunlight coming in. And if you can do that, it'll help regulate that. Also, you need to have your cor- your uh, cortisol levels and your DHEA levels and your blood sugar levels tested to see what it is and to make sure that you never go to bed hungry and that when you wake up in the morning, you would do the same thing as if you woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning or 6.30 in the morning. The same thing is true if, you, if you're, you know, the shift at, what is it, 5 to 1 or, you know, 5 to midnight. You would do this, the same type of thing. You would regulate. That one's not as bad as the one that, you know, you're, you're up all night long. So you, is it a good thing? Well, we're, not, we're, we're nocturnal creatures. We should be sleeping when the sun is down, and we should be awake when the sun is up. But when we can't do that because we're working odd shifts, then you have to adapt it in that way. I hope that's somewhat useful uh, to you, but I'd have to know a whole lot more. I'd have to know what your cortisol levels are. But generally broad-based, that's what you need to do. Laura, thank you very much for your phone call. We're coming up to a break, and don't go away. My guest in studio, Dr. Matthew Adams, we're talking about insomnia, and he will present a whole evening on that this Wednesday evening at 7.30. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. If you're looking for the best in natural health, wellness, and green living products, shop the Roselle Web Store on Amazon.com. You'll find a variety of products and resources that are designed to help achieve an ultimate state of health and wellness. Shop the Roselle Web Store on Amazon.com today. Visit drtomroselle.com and click on Roselle Web Store. That's drtomroselle.com and click on Roselle Web Store. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. Hi, this is Dr. Tom Roselle, host of Dr. Tom Roselle Live, reminding all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Also consider a thermography scan from the thermography centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Thermographic imaging can detect abnormalities years before a mammogram, and it's safe and non-invasive. For more information, call 888-485-7736 or visit thermographycenters.com. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. We are live. We are here. We're having fun. Hope you are, too. It's a beautiful day outside. It's cold, but you know what? You still need to get outside. We've been broadcasting from WMAL 105.9 FM and AM 630, as we do every Sunday at 12 noon, trying to bring you the most informative and cutting-edge information and, more than anything else, making you think differently than you have before. Your Health is a Do-It-Yourself program, and what we're all about is giving you the tools to challenge anything and anybody who says anything to you, including me. No matter what we say, no matter how we put it out there, I want you to inform yourself. I want you to do the research, but both ends. Don't buy into one piece of it or, or over the other. Take a look at the information, weigh it, and look at it from structural, chemical, emotional, those pieces that have to stay in balance for you to stay healthy and well. Let's go back to the phones. Linda, how can I help you? Thank you for your call. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. I wanted to know specifically how a person with atrial fibrillation, continuous atrial fib, who's been put on digoxin and betaface, 
uh, can be helped and also specifically can cardioversion be helpful? Linda, I'm sorry that I can't be super specific only because I don't have enough time to get into it. But I'm going to uh, broad brush you and then if you write me at drtomresult.com, I, I will post it and blog it, but I also I will get back to you specifically. But let me say this to you. The heart itself has three electrical sources. One is the pacemaker within the heart. The second is the vagus nerve that comes from the brain. And the third are the nerves that come from the upper part of the, your back, near your neck. Those are called the splanchnic nerves or the parasympathetic nerves to, to the heart. So the heart needs all three of those guys working in harmony for the heart to work properly. That's number one. Number two, nutritionally, magnesium, sodium, potassium, minimally have to stay in balance for the heart to work. Coenzyme Q10 has to be regulated. The acupuncture system to the heart has to work in cooperation with the other uh, energetic regulatory systems in the body. So what you look at is all of those pieces. There's not take this. You have to understand what caused it, when it came about. Allergy reactions will cause the heart to misfire as well. If you could, if you have different nutrients and allergens that you're you're sensitive to, the body's going to manifest itself in many ways. The heart is one of them, and we could go on. I'm really sorry. I'd love to get into that topic. Actually, it's a great topic, uh, you know, to uh, touch upon. But uh, get a hold of me, Linda, and we'll be more than happy to discuss it further. Doctor Matt, this Wednesday evening, you're the guy. So, what are we going to talk about? Well, you mentioned uh, chemical, emotional, structural. We're going to go through um, insomnia and talk about all those different things, uh, how it's affected by your structural system, pain, how it affects adrenal glands, how the diet you have, how that affects your blood sugar regulation, how that affects you waking up in the middle of the night, how that affects your adrenal system as well. We're going to talk about emotional stress and the things that go through. And then we're going to talk about what we can do about them. You know, we live in a life full of these stressors, and we, we hear this all the time. I have this because I have stress, but no one tells us what to do about it. They just say, okay, well, you can take this, but we're going to help you understand what you can do about it, how we can check and find these things out, and, they, and, uh, that, and hopefully you can understand that there's a solution. There's a solution to get out of this. There's a solution to everything as long as you're still breathing. And I'm excited for the presentation. I will be there. going to listen with everybody else. And this is a topic that has a fix to it. And that's what we want to offer you, a potential to be able to fix something. Give us a call at 703-698-7117. We're here every Sunday, and hopefully on an ongoing basis. The program, as always, is way too short. Call WML. Tell them that you want to uh, have this extended. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. I'll be here next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com.